हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू ऑल आर फाइन वेलकम यू इन टू अ न्यू अकेडमिक सेशन टूडे आई कर्मेंद्र इज हियर टू हेल्प यू विद माई न्यू लेसन ऑफ ई वी एस ऑन ग्लोब्स एंड मैप्स वी ऑल नो प्लेनेट अर्थ इज अज स्पेयर मेड अप ऑफ लैंड वॉटर वी स्टडी द फीचर्स ऑफ planet earth using a globe and different types of maps in this video lesson i will explain about globes and maps advantage and disadvantage of globe and map differences between a globe and a map last one is types of maps so let's start a globe is a miniature model of earth or we can say a globe is a small scale Three dimensional model of the earth. A globe helps us to learn many things about earth such as the exact shape of earth, the names, shapes, size and location of continents, countries, oceans and seas and the tilt of earth axis. Do you know what is earth axis? I will tell you. Earth axis is an imaginary line that passes through the north pole center and south pole of the earth around this line earth rotates from west to east direction or anti clockwise direction the disadvantage of a globe is that their awkward size and shape makes them difficult to carry around imagine trying to fit a globe inside of your glove box or in your back pocket the biggest disadvantage is that globes represent the entire earth since the earth is so big globes will always be a small scale model of the earth this means that it is difficult to show very much detail on a globe only the large objects can be shown such as the continents a few lakes and rivers smaller lakes streams and hills simply cannot be shown a map is a essential tool of a geographer it is a representation of a earth as whole or part of the earth drawn on a flat surface and it can show continents courtiers cities and even a local areas with all details these are the maps a flat map cannot accurately show the curved surface of the earth when a map is drawn the shape and size get distorted the maximum distortion occurs in the region of poles and less at equatorial region it's not a new phenomenon and has been practiced since the ancient times a map and globe are very much different while a map gives a two dimensional presentation of certain regions in the world a globe gives a three dimensional presentation of the entire world a map is easy to use and portable whereas a globe is not the regions can be easily identified in a map than in a globe a map presents the physical features of particular region of the earth on a plain surface maps come with various symbols and signs related to the geographical and physical features there are different types of maps that serve different purposes first one is political maps second one is physical map third one is topographical map or contour map fourth one is climatic map fifth one is tourist map sixth one is thematic map all right the first kind of map we're going to take a peek at is a physical map Now a physical map shows characteristics of the environment such as mountains, rivers, lakes. And and that's how it gets its name. It's called a physical map because it shows characteristics of the physical landform, the physical environment. Now the water is usually shown in blue, and it seems kind of obvious, but I do want to point out something else about the colors. What's special about a physical map is they use colors to show relief. And what relief is is it's just differences in land heights or land elevations. 
So I'll zoom in on these maps in just a second, but if you take a peek at this map right here of North America, you can see that it's got some land over here that's kind of greenish, it's got some land that's maybe a lighter shade of green, and then right in here it's got some brown and some darker brown or maybe an orangish color. And that shows the differences in the height. So typically, green is used to show lower elevations, area that's lower, and orange and brown shows areas that are higher. So let's zoom in and take a little bit of a more enhanced look. So it makes sense that this orange and brown represents higher elevations because look at what it's representing, the Rocky Mountains right here. You can also see in this area it's got green all the way around, but it's got this little strip of tan right here and it says that it's the Appalachian Mountains. So the color is indicating different elevations or heights of the land. And it also has different things like mountains or streams or rivers. Let's take one more look at a physical map. Another good thing to emphasize is that it does not matter what area the map show. So this is of the continent of Europe versus this was the continent of North America. Maps, it does not matter what area the map shows, it matters what details the maps have on it. So physical maps could be in any different part of the world. It could be a large continent, it could be the whole world, it could be just the state of South Dakota, as long as it shows elements of the physical landform. All right, let's jump to our next type of map. And these are political maps. And what political maps do is they show different boundaries for different states or countries. Now a capital city is usually indicated with a star within a circle in a political map. So let's take a peek at a couple of different examples. So again, this is the entire world. So in this map, they use different colors to indicate different countries. That's why right around the borders of the United States, you can see that it's a distinct land versus Canada or Mexico. You could go over here in Asia and say the same thing. You can see the difference between the country of China versus Mongolia based on the color. And here's one of the United States. So again, it uses the different colors. It doesn't use shading to show different heights of the land. It uses the colors to show the different boundaries. And this one's a little bit more detailed. It has um, some roads, some rivers, but that's not necessarily always the case within political maps. But you can also see that for all 50 states, you see one that has a star, and that indicates the state's capital. All right, the next type of map is probably the one you're most familiar with. They're road maps. So they show how to get from one place to another. And a road map usually shows different types of roads, like highways or interstates. They'll show the different cities, uh, points of interest, so usually it's tourists that are using maps, and some natural features. It's just a couple of looks. This one is the state of South Carolina. So if I were looking to get from Columbia to... Florence, I could take Interstate 20 right here, and that's indicated in this road map. Here's a state you might be familiar with. It's the state of South Dakota. So if I wanted to get from Brookings down to Sioux Falls, I would drive south on I-29. If I wanted to go from Brookings to Huron to cheer on the Bobcats, I would go west on Highway 14. So a road map has roads on it. It tells you how to get from one place to another. And the last type of map we're going to look at today is a historical map. Historical maps show information about past events and where they occurred. Does that look like the current United States? No, of course not. It doesn't even have North and South Dakota here. It just has the Dakota Territory. So this is not a current map of the United States. What it does is it shows you about a point in history and you can use maps, historical maps, to learn more about history. Here's another example. Again, this does not look like what the US is like today. In this map, the United States was only in this area in the pinkish color. But it does give you some information about what happened in history, about the land that was acquired by the US called Louisiana, 
and this part of what's today the U.S. that was at that time Spanish territory. So again, it just gives you a little bit more detailed look of that point in history. And I've got one last example for you. It's of the Pony Express. So again, not a current map, but it does give you details about something that happened in the past. And this one's about the different riders that would carry mail from different stations from out here in Missouri all the way out to California. So hopefully this clears up and gives you a little bit more insight into different types of maps and the different uses that each maps have.